Okay, let's do this. 93. What does 93 look like? Math. It is mathy. They're called two step equations. Um, what's the main goal of solving an equation? Do you remember talking about that? To get the answer. To get the answer, but in an equation, you've got variables. What's the main goal? Kiara? Yes, so you're, there's three principles. Your main goal is to get the variable by itself. So you have to get rid of stuff that's on the same side as the variable, right? Um, so to eliminate stuff, you do the opposite operation, and then whatever you do on one side, you do the other. So two-step equations means you have two things to get rid of on the side of the variable. That's pretty simple, right? So it just takes two steps, and you got your variable by itself. So let's just try something. Let's try this equation. 2x plus 5 equals 35. Well, I bet you you could try to figure out what x is by just picking some numbers and seeing if it works and then trying something different. Can you guess what it is? So what do you multiply by 2 and then add 5 to get 35? Uh, What's x? x? Can you do it in your head? 15. Yeah, you double 15, you get 30, you add 5. So let's see how we can do that using algebra. All right? Now, you can math if you want, but algebra does the math for you. So in order to get x by itself, you have to do, you have to get rid of stuff. So I always think about this as like there's two guards guarding x. So if I'm rescuing x and I've got a sniper rifle, who am I going to take out first? Two. Really? Five. Well, yeah, because five, you get because two is really close to X. So take out the easier target first. All right, he's he's dead. Yes, Sorry, you you red pen. Yes, but you how do you get rid of? I'll, I'll use my red pen, but not for this one. How do you get rid of five? Well, five is being added. So what's the opposite of addition? Subtraction. So we're going to get rid of five like this. So whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Cover your tracks. Make it look like nothing happened. Okay, so then we're left with 30 on this side and then a 2x on this side. Now, how do you get rid of that too? Divide it by Yeah, divide it because it's being multiplied. So divide both sides by 2. x equals 15. Now, I know you knew that. And you know that I knew that you knew that. But using an equation like this, it's easy to do, solve this equation, but if you learn on an easy equation, then you can do a hard equation, okay? So let's try another two-step equation. Ready? Point four x plus 1.2 equals 6. Well, all right. Well, now this is a little bit more difficult to do in your head, isn't it? So let's just follow the steps. What do you want to get rid of first? 1.2. How do you get rid of plus 1.2? Subtract 1.2. Okay, line it up. Add a decimal and a zero. So 0.4x equals 4.8. Okay, now what? Adeline? You divide 0.4 by 0.4. Yep, divide both sides by 0.4. Both sides, because you can't just divide this by 0.4 without do doing the other side. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. So x equals, let's move the decimal over one place. How many times is 4 going to 48? Uh, five times. 16. What? 12 times. 12 times, that's right. Yeah. My brain said 16. Yeah. And that's divided by 3 is 16. But divided by 4 is 12. Good. All right. Not too bad, right? Well, if you can do decimals. And you can do fractions. Negative two thirds x minus one half equals one third. What do you want to get rid of first? One, one half. R right. That looks like the easier target. How do you get rid of minus one half? Add one half. Add one half. Okay. What's the common denominator? 
So this becomes a two six plus three six. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so negative two thirds x equals five six. Now what? Divide by negative two thirds. Now, some of you are still doing this. Some of you are still copy dot flopping that. Really? You don't copy dot flop that. You don't go negative two thirds times six fifths, right? That's not right because this is not a division problem yet. Let's make it a division problem. We're going to divide. I almost used the wrong color there, Evelyn. That would have been bad. So divide by negative two thirds. Well, that cancels, but you're left with this division problem. So I'm going to copy dot flop this. You flop what you're dividing by, not what you're dividing from. Okay. All right. So this cancels. One, two, so you get negative five fourths. Not bad, right? Can you guys handle that? Yeah. All right. Well, if you can do fractions. Wait, Mr. Flack, isn't five six positive? No, nope, because you're going five six. Five six is positive, Wait. but you're divided by negative two thirds. Okay. So positive divided by a negative is a negative. Okay. Okay. I thought it was a negative, I don't know why. That's all right, don't be embarrassed. Okay, let's do two more examples and then we'll move on to 894, sound good? Yeah, that sounds great, Mr. Black. You're so good, you're so great. Negative 15. Okay, now the only trick about this is the x's are on the other side, but don't let that fool you. You're still trying to get x by itself, doesn't matter what side it's on. So what do you want to get rid of first? The six. Six, how do you get rid of six? Subtract it by six. Okay, so whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Can you do that one? What's that? That's neg wait, negative 21. Nine. Negative? 21. 21. Oh, I did so that. now if you need to do this guys, chicken scratch, right? Negative 15 and another negative six. But if you already have negative 15 and you subtract six more, then you end up, I'm going the wrong way, sorry. Um, then you end up at negative 21 equals three X. You can probably do the rest in your head, but now what do we do? Roots. Divide by three. X equals negative seven, negative seven equals X. You can say that. If X equals seven, negative seven, then negative seven equals X. Do you remember what property that is? Um, no, well, that's reversible if you add or multiply, yes. But when you just say, if A equals B, then B equals A. Anybody remember that property that is? Starts with an S. Splendid. <laughs> splendid pride is a splendid property. If A equals B, then B equals A. Do you remember? Super. So commutative is what Grady just said. That's if you're adding or multiplying, but it's very much like the commutative property, but it's with equality. Simple. My left side of my face. Symmetrical. There, yes, symmetric property. You guys remember talking about that? Oh, yes. Yeah. All right, one more and then I'll, I'll be quiet for 93. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so what if I had an inequality? What if 2x minus 5 was not equal to 1, but greater than or equal to 1? What? So that means this right side was not balanced, but it looked like this. How dare it? How dare it? Okay, so that left side is heavier than the right side. Okay, we have to keep it like this. Okay, so the same rules apply. Whatever you add to this side, just make sure you add the same weight so it stays like this. If you subtract something, just make sure you subtract the same thing. Okay, so what do you want to, how do you get X by itself? Add five, add five, right? Two X is still greater than or equal to six. Then what? Divide by two, you're just doing the same thing. It's just like an equation. It's just 
x is greater than or equal to three. It's still looking like this, okay? So that's an inequality. We'll talk about different inequalities more maybe next year. But for now, you can just solve an inequality the same way you solve an equation. Okay, everybody good with that? All right, 94. It's like a piece of fuzz or something. It's itching my nose. Ooh, there's a hair, a long hair, and you know it's not mine. <laughs> How did that get there? It's disturbing. Someone was not six feet from me. What do you want to mean? No, I'm not talking <laughs> with you. I'm not the only one with hair in this. this room. <laughs> oh, no, I still feel it. I still feel the fuzziness. <laughs> Probably. I sneeze on that like all of a sudden, and that's why. Okay, moving on to 94. Oh, did you click record? I did, thank you. Okay, good. For reminding me. Okay, we're going to talk about um, something cool, something smart sounding compound probability. You guys remember talking about probability? What's the probability of flipping a tails uh, on a coin? Half. One out of two, right? Hey, dude. Red notebook. Red notebook. Red notebook. Ned wrote book. What? No. Yeah, yeah, you get your Ned wrote book. <laughs> Sorry, no Ned wrote book. Okay. Uh, compound probability. So this has happened. Anybody know the probability of flipping a tails five times in a row? Oh my gosh. <laughs> How many times are you flipping the coin? Five times. What's the probability? If you flip a coin five times, it'll be a tails every time. Uh, one to five? Wait, okay, no. let's try something simpler. Let's just try three tails in a row. Do you know what the probability of flipping the tails three times in a row is? Uh, Anyone know? Okay, well, how many different possibilities are there of flipping a coin three times? You could do this. You could do um, tails, 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 right? You could do a tails, tails, heads. You could do a tails, heads, tails. You could do a hail, <laughs> tails, to whatever. Um, you could do a tails, heads, heads. You could do a heads, tails, heads. You could do a heads, heads, tails. Oh, on that. And then you could do a heads, heads, heads. How many different possibilities is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the probability of three tails in a row is one out of eight total. Oh, well, that's sad. So the probability gets lower and lower the more times you flip that coin. Any guesses on what flipping a tails four times in a row is? Uh, one ten? Wait, my brain's one sixteen. One sixteen. Your sample space doubles every time. What about five times? That would be one out of 30 seconds. One thirty second is your probability. Okay? Now, there's an easier way to do this. You don't have to start listing all the different possibilities, but this is a good way to solve puzzles and codes. Anyone ever play Skyrim? What's that? Like there's like different, did you? Yeah. You're so cool. <laughs> so um, there's like different puzzles that you solve. Well, there's only like four or five different like animals that, you know, those, those circles, discs, things that you have to like. So there's only four or five different things. You just try every possibility. You could do that, but to do, to do probability, probability of something happening like tails, 
tails, tails is just the product. What's product mean? Multiplication. Multiplication. It's just the product of their individual probabilities. Look at this. So this becomes easy. What's the probability of just flipping the tails one time? One. One half, right? Times one half times one half. What's one half times one half times one half? One eighth. So that makes it a lot easier. The probability of, of something happening this in this certain order is just the product of the individual prob probabilities. Okay, so let's try um, this. So this is what I want you to know. So the probability of events happening in a specific order is equal to the product of those individual probabilities. What is that noise? <laughs> it's my chair. All right, I'll do that because that gives me twitches. <laughs> okay, so let's let's do this. What do you think the probability of flipping a heads, another heads, and then a tails is? Any guesses? One eighth. It's still one eighth. It's right there, right? One out of eight still, but. Again, you can do probability of heads, which is one half, times probability of heads, which is another half, times the probability of tails. So it doesn't matter which side of the coin, the probability is the same. That's still one eighth. Okay? What's the probability of rolling a six two times in a row? In other words, what's the probability of rolling two sixes with the dice, with dice? You're giving a six and a six. What's the probability of that? Um, um, uh, 36. One, 136. 130, that's hard to say. 136. <laughs> that. That's right. Okay. So, yeah, probability of a six and a six is one six times one six, which is 136, right? And if you think about it, remember rolling two dice, there's 36 different possible combinations. You can get a one and a one, one and a two, one and a three, one and a four, one and a five, one and a six. You can get a two and a one, two and a two, two and a three, two and a four. So that's 36 different combinations of the two dice, right? Well, six and a six is only one of those 36. But you could do it this way. It's like you're rolling a die and then you're rolling another die. The probability of rolling the six is one six. The probability of rolling that second Six is also one six. One six times one six is one thirty six. Okay. All right. So um, this is a long lesson. Look at this; it goes all the way to there. But we're we're about right there. All right. So you might see something like this in your book. You get a spinner here, and you've got one, two, three, four. And you've got a little spinner thing here that uh, um, you can spin it. You know those little games where you spin the, spin the, what do you call it? Spin the spinner. Okay, what's the probability of getting a one and then a two? Four. One yeah, so not a half, but. Oh, because that's two times. So one out of yeah. how many different numbers are there? Four. four times another one fourth equals one sixteenth. Make sense? Fuzzy. All right. Um, we already did the probability of rolling a 12. That's the only way to roll a 12 on dice is if you have a six and then another six. And that's one six times one six, right? But the probability of rolling a nine is a little different, okay? Seems like seven. Yeah, it's different because now you there's different combinations that will add up to nine. What are the different combinations? What's the probability of rolling a nine? So this is example four. 
I want to know the probability of, uh, let's do this, of rolling something greater than a nine. Oh, okay. how many like sides are on the dice? So just six sides on a, on a die. Okay, so they call it a number cube now, because it's awkward to say rolling a die. That sounds so morbid. Okay, so what, what will equal greater than nine? Number two. Um, 10, 11, and 12. Well, yeah, 10, 11, and 12. So what numbers on two dice will give you 10, 11, or 12? A lot. Let's start with 10. Six, six, what numbers add up to 10? Five and a four. Six and a four. Five and five. Five and a five. And then a, a four and a six, right? A seven and a three. So there's no sevens oh, on no. a number cube, right? So now let's do 11s. What adds up to 11? Four, six and five. Five and a six or a six and a five. What adds up to 12? Just six and six, right? So here's 11, here's 10, and here's 12. So how many is that? Six. Six out of how many total again? Uh oh, what? 36, so one six. The other way you could do it is you could go, okay, well, this is six and a four is just one. Well, yeah, and, and there's not a certain order here. If you get a six, you have to get a four the next time. Well, that would be a little confusing. So in this case, it's not like multiplying probabilities. It's just trying to think of all the different combinations. So you kind of have to think about your two dice. Just remember, when you roll two dice, there's 36 combinations. So you have to figure out which ones add up to more than nine. So which ones add up to 10, which ones add up to 11, which ones add up to 12. There's nothing that adds up more than that. So you only have six combinations that add up bigger than nine. Okay, you guys think you can handle a problem like that? Okay, think of that. And if you need to write it out like this, one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, two, one, two, 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 three, and so on, all the way to six, 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 one, six, two, all the way down to six, six, okay? You need to make a little chart and then circle which ones add up more than nine. That would be easy too, okay? All right. Is that it? Nope, oh. nope, 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 nope. Okay, we're a little bit more. Uh, let's do, okay, let's do this. What's the probability of getting a, basically a 10 or, oh, uh, or getting an 11 or 12 on a die, on two dice. So basically the probability of getting a five and then a five or six. So let me write it out first. And then when I write it out, it's pretty easy to do the math. So if I write it like this, if I go probability of five and then five or six, well, we can calculate those individual probabilities. So this is just probability of five times probability of five or six, right? What's the probability of rolling a five? Uh, one, six. One, six, right? What's the probability of rolling a five or six? Two, six. Two out of six, right? Two, six. So you get 236, which is one eighteenth. You could cross reduce. Some of you guys are not big on cross reducing, and it costs you half points on your test because your answers weren't reduced. If you're multiplying fractions, don't miss out on that joy of cross canceling. In math, there's not a greater joy than canceling factors. I mean, you might like certain parts of math better than others, but when it comes to canceling, it's just so therapeutic. Therapeutic. Okay? All right, let's just try two more examples and then we'll call it a day. Actually, one more example. This is why um, 
smart people don't go up to Blackhawk every weekend. Okay? Smart people know probability. Wait. If you go up to Blackhawk every weekend, then you're just you're just going up to lose money. Yes. Question? Blackhawk is where there's casinos oh. and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so this is why gambling, uh, the house is always in favor, right? So here's the deal. What's the probability? I'm going to play some poker and I think I'm going to get four aces. What's the probability of drawing four aces from a deck? From a deck? Okay, four out of six. What? Fifty-two. So this is the individual probabilities, right? Now, here's the deal, though. When you draw an ace out of the deck, there's one less ace in the deck. So what's the probability of drawing this first ace? Four out of fifty-two, right? There's four aces and a total of 52 cards. Oh, then three, then two, then one. Yes, then three. Now there's three left, but how many total cards are left? 51. Oh. Now there's two left. Now there's one left. Okay, so I can do a little bit of canceling. Get these numbers down a little bit. That's 1 25th. This is 1 uh, 17th. This is 1 13th. And everything else cancel on top. So you know what you're left with? Not a good probability is what you're left with. Here's what you're left with. You have a one out of 270,725 probability of drawing four aces. So you're like, you know what? If I could just draw four aces, then I'll win lots of money. Okay, now there is a chance but it's one out of over a quarter of a million <laughs> chances of getting the, those, those four aces. So, you know, in the movies when you're like, oh, Dang, it's gonna get a royal flush if he gets it like that, it's gonna be awesome. Okay, that, that doesn't happen. It happens maybe once every quarter of a million times. I guess it is a possibility, right? Anybody see the movie Dumb and Dumber? No. Yeah. So you're like, so what do you think my chances are? Like one in a hundred, one in ten, more like one in a million. And he was like, so you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah, one in, one in a million. But it's still a chance. It's still a probability. Go, hey, drop a thousand dollars up in Blackhawk. See what, see what it does. Yes. My dad knows a friend who's a banker. And they <laughs> never, ever want to play poker with him. Because he usually wins because he does the math ahead of time. Yeah, so you can play the odds. Winning, and then he wins, so they never want to play poker. Right? Yeah, so it's a lot of math. There's a lot of probability in poker. Um, now, if you get to the bottom of the deck, your probability, you know, gets gets better. If you don't have an ace already, your probability of finding an ace in that deck is is a little better. Better, but you don't know what anyone else has either. So there is a little bit of math. If you know some math, you'll be a better card player. But if you know some math, then you don't want to play cards because you know the probability is slim. Okay? No math and enjoy playing cards. That's right. So if you were to go to Blackhawk, if you just go with the idea of I'm going to spend $20 and have some fun, then I'm going to lose that $20, but I'm, I'm not going to go to win money. If you go to win money, then you're not you're going to be disappointed. Every once in a while you do that. Can I tell you about my friend who went to Las Vegas? No. Like he he we I moved from Iowa and he came out to visit me and he just like let's go to Las Vegas. I've never been there. So he goes in and he puts a quarter in a slot machine. The first quarter and he wants two hundred wins two hundred fifty dollars. Oh my! And so he's like, I just won. This is great. I'm going to come here every weekend. But you know what? I'm I'm convinced. There's people up in an upper room somewhere with TV monitors. Oh, I've never seen this guy before. Let's hook him. So let's up uh, make the slot machine win. And he goes, look, I'm going to come back every weekend. So he did come back like almost every weekend. He went back to Las Vegas and tried to play the slot machines and lost a lot of money. 
So the guys in the upper room who are looking at, oh, this guy's a sucker. Let's let him win. And so now they won so much more money from him than they gave him. So it's a $250. No, I don't, that probably doesn't happen. That would be illegal. But um, he got lucky. That's what luck means. The probability, the odds are never in your favor. So it's all about luck. Okay. All right. Any questions with probability? No. Compound probability. See why it's called compound? Because it's things happening in a certain order. That's it. Good job. Black math. Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black math.